Hey guys, this is Becky. This is part one of our digital drawing with a mouse tutorial series. And in this little video, I'm going to show you how to take line art from something you have drawn right off your sketch and turn it into digital line art that you can use and color under and all that fancy pants stuff without having to do actually that much work. So, as you can see, I have my raw scan here. This is at 600 dpi. Um, that is quite high, but I prefer working in higher resolution and I strongly recommend it. You can always make it smaller later if you don't like it. Um, as you can see, I haven't done anything to this since the spirals all over the place and the kind of light pencil. And just so you know, the way I did this was I went in there and did all my sketch work with blue pencil. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this because it's scanned very faint, but um, I did all my sketching with blue pencil and then I did a quote unquote inking. Uh, with a mechanical pencil because I have a little bit better control over that as opposed to an ink pen, but uh, the technique you use is up to you. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our background layer down here. And pretty much, no matter what I'm doing, I always do that because no matter how much I mess up, I always have my original to go back to here and use as a reference if I need to. So, I always do that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make um, these lines a lot darker. As you can see, they're kind of a washed out gray. They're not dark black at all. And for the technique we're going to use, we're going to want to fix that. So you're going to need to create a levels adjustment layer. And if you have one of the later versions of Photoshop, it'll be uh, right up here in your adjustments tab. You can also find it in here and older versions in this little black and white circle up here by levels. And you can also find it in here in Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Uh, however, I prefer getting it from either here or here because it actually creates its own adjustment layer and um, as you can see down here, and so you can go back and tweak it a lot easier later. Anyway, something will pop up and this is called a histogram. It'll either be here or somewhere over here depending on your version. And it's basically a representation of the value range in your picture. Um, this little triangle represents the whites, and as you can see, all the black is over here because this is a primarily white picture. This gray one represents mid tones, and there's really not very many in here. And this black one, which unfortunately we have none of, are the very darks. So, in this instance, we want to make black darker, and by to do that, you just grab the slider and drag it over. Now, a general rule when you're doing this, not only with line work, but pretty much with anything, is only bring it over until it's touching the very beginning of your histogram. But in this picture, I'm going to want it a little bit darker, so I'm going to pull it over more anyway. Um, and as you can see, if I bring it over, it gets very crazy, so it's just a matter of judgment. I want it here. I don't want to pull it over too far, because it's also um, creating a bunch of different tones in this line work. Let's go up oops, closer. So you can see, as you can see, there's dark streaks in here and that kind of thing, and I want it to be as even as possible. So I don't want to make it too extreme on my level, so I'm just going to call that good. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, and you might not need to do this, but on, since I inked this with pencil, um, I'm going to. You go to Image, Adjustments, and Brightness Contrast. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to pull your contrast down. That will make it so there's less range of value inside these lines and make them kind of a more solid gray. Like you can see how they're all spotted there and real thin and not too good looking, but you pull this down and they become more of an even tone. So that's what we're looking for. We go up here and show you this is before I did anything and this is after. You can see they're all darker and here's before and after. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create two new layers, and we're going to do it above all this. Um, the first one is going to be called oops, Backdrop, and we are going to fill that with white or some solid color. I'm just going to use white for now because you can easily change it later. And you can use your fill bucket over here, but I like to go to Edit, Fill, and pick from this drop down menu white and bam. Now as you can see that's hidden our drawing which is bad for now but later on after we get our beautiful line art anymore we're not going to want to look at all this so using this backdrop layer we can cover it all up. So I'm going to leave that off for now and we're going to create our other layer and call that line art and this is where our final beautiful line art is going to end up going. 
So to move the line art off of our white paper onto its own layer, you're going to get your eyedropper tool, zoom in, and find somewhere in your line art that kind of represents the tonality as a whole. For example, I want to select down here because most of my lines are this color. I wouldn't select from up here because you can say it's real light, spotty gray. I want to select a color that, you know, kind of represents my lines as a whole. We'll zoom out again. And you're going to go to select up here and down here to color range. And what this does is it um, tells Photoshop to go in your picture and grab every single pixel that is that color. Now you can adjust um, exactly how accurate to that color it's going to be by playing with the fuzziness. For example, if I tell it to have no fuzziness, it's only going to select that gray. And um, unfortunately all my pixels are not the same color, so that will not be very useful. But if we slide our fuzziness over, you can see down in here more white is appearing, meaning it's selecting a little bit more, um, or grays that are kind of close to that one, has more of a give or take factor, you know. And so you can, if you slide it over too much, you can see this turns gray, which means it's going to select some of my white. I don't want that. I'm going to try it here. Alright, and as you can see, dotted lines have appeared around my lines. I'm going to go up closer. Go even closer over here, meaning that my line work has been selected. And this is what I'm going for. So. We're not going to need this layer anymore, so we're just going to turn on our backdrop. Don't get rid of it yet. Make sure you go up to your line art layer. Don't stay down here. Go back up to line art. Go to edit, fill, and change it to black. Hit control D for to deselect, and there you have it. You have your line art that's been moved up, and it actually stayed pretty accurate to what my pencil looked like. Um, as you can see, see it's still highly textured, and you may or may not want that. Um, if you go back and tweak your fuzziness, maybe make your lines darker, trying to get them more even, it will come out um, differently. That will take some experimentation. Also, as I'm sure you can see, based on these giant spirals up here, there is some dirt that's left over on there, and there's also little specks here and there. Our scanner's not real clean. There are things on my paper. So unfortunately, you are going to have to go in here with an eraser and clean this up a little bit. And I'll do that real quick, but I won't make you watch it. Okay, so I've gone around and erased all the little uh, bits of this and that and little specks and those horrid spirals and the shadows around the edge of the paper. Um, and so that's your finished line art, and it's all in its own layer. And the neat thing about this is you can create a layer right underneath it, grab a color, color underneath it without coloring over it, as you can see. And you can mess with it and have it not be affected whatsoever by everything that you do underneath. And there's also another advantage to having lines on their own layer that I will show you. And that um, has to do with this little button. This is called Lock Transparent Pixels. It's this little checkerboard up here. And if you click that, it'll take everything on this layer that is see-through and keep it see-through. Meaning if, say, oh, let's grab a color. Say I try and paint over here, or try and color in the lines or something, it's not going to work. But if I go to where there is color value, black in this case, it will turn colors, as you can see. And this is really handy later on if you don't want to use just black line art, or if you want your line art to be different colors, because obviously you are pretty much unlimited in how you color it and what you do with it here. Alright, so that is how to take line art straight off your sketch, not do a whole lot of work to it, and have something you can work with. Um, check out parts two and three for other techniques in lining and how to start get coloring. Thanks for watching!